to my channel. Uh, in this video, I just want to go over some more of your recent comments. I won't be able to cover them all in this video, but I'll cover some of them. Um, the first comment um, is by someone over in Brazil. Um, who... And this, this comment is in relation to the newer diversity movement and their kind of initial positive intentions. Um, how those initial positive intentions um, have not necessarily played out in reality. Or, or in other words, the, the newer diversity movement might have positive intentions, but when they reach, but when they interact with the messiness of the real world, um, it doesn't always sort of tally. So I'll just kind of uh, read out some of it to you. So this person says that she's been diagnosed with ADHD and she needs medication to function. So it sounds like you have a pretty severe case of ADHD where obviously you need medication to function. That's quite severe. Um, and that you don't buy the argument that medication is bad as another way to pathologise us. And that you see that you see people in the newer diversity movement reproducing. So you see people in the newer diversity movement reproducing the argument that medication is bad as it's seen as another way to pathologise us. Um, but you don't buy that argument because for you medication is absolutely essential in managing your ADHD. But at the beginning, the main objective of the newer diversity movement was to simply help us accept ourselves more. For example, there's no right or wrong way of living lives. So, you know, so that seems to be quite a kind of potentially positive um, intention of a newer diversity movement. You know, you might think, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's just helping people to accept their differences and so on. But transposing this idea to the real world is challenging, even more so as we live in a capitalist society that values productivity above all other things. So it seems that living well is living up to other people's expectations, for example, having a relationship, a good job, etc. So what ends up happening is people only acknowledge our unique way of being when we manage to use it as a tool for being productive, for example, using hyperfixations to be good at a job. The rest of us are labelled as problematic, lazy, or even as people that are letting our very real limitations limit our true capabilities. So yeah, there is this sort of double standard there, and this is where the newer diversity movement sort of good intentions, um, you know, they're fine in a vacuum, but when they meet the real world, um, we face problems because... And it does seem, certainly in my opinion, that a lot of the newer diversity movement is allied very much with um, certain liberal tendencies in capitalism. So there are certain people who are fully kind of um, support sort of capitalist ideology, but sort of nevertheless see themselves as progressives within that. Um, so, yeah, so it seems to be heavily allied to a certain progressive, in inverted commas, capitalist mindset. It doesn't really challenge capitalism, so it's not that radical. It sits nicely within the framework of capitalism, the part of the ideology that values productivity. And then if you happen to have a newer developmental condition that an eight, uh, uh, and you are productive, or you meet the capitalist ideal... Um, then you get a pat on the back. And newer diversity movement seems to be all about kind of um, highlighting productivity within newer developmental conditions, like showing that a newer developmental, someone with a newer developmental condition can be fit for capitalism. Obviously, they don't phrase it like that, but, you know, you can sort of see what's going on. You look deeper, deeper at it. Um, and obviously, those who can't fulfil that ideal you know, are just sidelined and ignored. Um, so, yeah, I agree. And um, you say that English is not your native language, so to bear with you on your comments. I thought your comment was written really, really well. 
Um, you obviously have a really good grasp of English, so no problem reading it at all. I thought it was very well written. Um, so yeah, so thank you for that comment. Um, and then there's a comment um, in relation to... There's a comment on the Inside Autistic Minds documentary. And uh, I think you're in the Netherlands. Um, and I think you said you haven't watched the documentary, so you're not completely sure. Um, but you, it's, on, it's, it's in connection to the, um, the assisted communication, um, where in a documentary, Murray uses non -verb, Murray is non-verbal when he uses assisted communication to help him express himself. And you say that sometimes crack methods are used in which the facilitator is the one doing the talking, appropriating the voice of a non-verbal. And also that facilitated communication is also pushed by the neurodiversity movement because it can fit into their ideology around self-advocacy um, and their idea that even someone who's sort of really, in inverted commas, low-functioning, um, is also able to sort of advocate for themselves if they're given the right tools and so on. So it fits heavily into that sort of ideology, um, which obviously is problematic because not all autistics can advocate for themselves or will ever be able to advocate for themselves. Um, yeah, I agree. I'm always a little bit sceptical around like this assisted communication stuff and to what extent is it the person who's expressing themselves and to what extent is it, you know, their parents or other caregivers. Um, so yeah, I do, I do, I am a little bit sceptical, and even if, like, and even if um, it is the case that some people like Murray do have a deep inner world that they, um, that they can express given the right um, technology, even if that is the case, that certainly doesn't mean it's the norm for all non-verbal autistics. Um, because my guess is that the majority of like non-verbal autistics just don't have that ability for abstraction, full stop. Um, so obviously Murray is quite not representative of most non-verbal autistics. I guess he's like one of the more functional of the non-verbal autistics in that he does, he can express himself given the right technology in quite a kind of... Um, abstract way really in terms of like how he expressed himself you know almost quite sort of metaphorically the way he expressed himself um comparing himself to a star or something I think it was I can't quite remember but it came across as quite kind of figurative and um obviously to have that ability to kind of express yourself like that does require some higher order ability to abstract and things like that and to form connections and obviously I just don't think that many autistic people who are like really severely um, impaired, I just don't think would have that ability. So I do feel he is doesn't represent most non-verbal autistics. Um, but yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move over to video number two now because there are a few more comments that I just want to go over. So moving over to video number two now.